Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever time it is in your part of the world. Welcome to Hag's Greenhouse today. Greenhouse and Garden Walks. Alright, I hope that you guys can see me okay. Um, today, I brought out a bunch of cleaned clay pots. Pots, clay pots are always my preference and the reason is as I've said it's because they allow while well, plastic does not allow any of the excess minerals and salts to leach out these are actually breathable when they're unglazed so um, they will allow and you can tell by the staining on them they will allow the excess salts and, and minerals that happen to be in your water to uh, uh, to exit out so um, it's just an extra little plus, I guess you might say, okay, to using them. Um, plus they allow evaporation to happen a little bit better, which also helps the roots of your plant to dry out because, um, plants actually need oxygen and, um, decaying matter, which would be like dying roots, um, or any other kind of matter, that your soil is made of and that's what soil is basically is you know composted plant matter um it, it, it helps to allow uh the gap when you water when you pour fresh water in you're flushing through the gases created by that that uh decomp and you're helping to uh, uh bring fresh oxygen in for the roots which they do require okay um, what I'm going to attempt to do today, because I tried to look it up on YouTube, and I was unsuccessful in getting any kind of, uh, information that I was looking for. Sure, there were plenty of, um, there were plenty of videos on Letaboria, and, you know, how to, how to, how to repot it, and how to separate it, and divide it, and yada yada. But I also found a ton and a half of misinformation. Um, it would appear that most people are not using basic science and physics. Um, they're not applying any of that to gardening. They're simply going with, you know, what they've been fed all along by the industry, you know. Um, and as I've said before, there's a world of difference between growing in a garden and growing in within the confined space of a container, okay? You can't possibly pack everything Mother Nature offers inside one of these. You can't do it. it cannot be done, okay? Um, not in any kind of a balance that would be beneficial to the plant long term. There's just no way that can happen, okay? So... <clears throat> What we're going to do, oh, we've also, I don't know if you guys, I, I made a couple of uh, uh, static videos and what happened is my card was full <laughs> and it didn't give me the message until about halfway through that I was not filming anything, so that was uh, not a lot of fun. But anyway, we have brought out um, one of my chalice vines here and we're going to make kind of like a, uh, a topiary out of it, I guess you might say. I have used um, pruning seal on the ends here, and it looks to me like I need to add a little bit more on the tip of this one. Um, what I wanted to do today was twofold. Um, let me come over here and get some coffee. What I what I really want to do is. Um, I, I want to get some of the better looking uh, uh, sunflowers that Road has managed to plant but never transfer from the flats to a garden setting. I wanted to put the best looking of those into um, a pot and see if we can't, you know, get some actual growth out of them. You never know what could happen, so we'll find out. Um, I have prepped a regular plastic pot, not my favorite, but it would appear that my one of my biggest uh, clay pots is broken, so that's all right. 
We're not going to plant that many of them. Um, I will get set up here to do that in a minute. We'll get a couple of those done maybe. Um, and then after that, I, oh, also, check this out. I salvaged, and it's actually starting to bloom. I salvaged some sedum. I'm not really sure on the variety here. I have no idea. It was left over from the days when, uh, Psyche and I actually bought, like, oh, God, a ton and a half of plants. Uh, and we had, <laughs> I should say I planted like 90% of them myself, and we had like eight acres in roses and other perennials, and it was just absolutely gorgeous. And this was one of them that got left in a flat, and you can see the pot is all torn up, the plastic is just, it's in bad shape here. It's got maple, uh, maple seeds in it, which I'm trying to remove right now. And, yeah, it's just, it looks really bad. But the plant is very tenacious, and it has survived, so that's another project for another day. Also, I have found a couple, and this is a nifty little piece. This actually, I'm a salvager. I reuse stuff. This actually came with a pot of, I don't know, a, probably a tree or a, a clematis vine or something. It's got two little clips here that clip on a pot with a diameter of, or I, I guess you might, yeah, diameter's across, I think. Um, so it would actually, let's see, now well, that would be a little bit too, probably one of, probably the size that the, the chalice vine is in right now. But you can see it goes down inside the pot, it's got the two legs, and then the pot, of course, has to be taller, but... These two things clip over the sides of a plastic pot, okay? And that would will help hold this up. So I thought that was a kind of a neat little thing. Found one of them. And then I found my other cathedral-like larger... Uh, yeah, this is a big one, okay? So this is going to be for a much larger pot. And this will be for when one of my chalice vines gets to be that size. <laughs> And honestly, it won't take long. Chalice vines grow like crazy. You can also trim the hell out of them, too, and they will stay whatever size you want. I chose shorter, wider pots for the Letaboria. And let's show you the Letaboria. Let's see if we can't swing this around. There we go. Okay, there's the Letaboria right there. I believe it to be Letaboria. I'm not sure if it's Socialis. I'm kind of iffy on that one because um, there are several different varieties that are cultivated. So um, it's a it's a, a bulbous plant where the bulbs grow above the soil. It grow it's from South Africa, as I understand. Um, I've heard people say it's a succulent. It's not really a succulent. It's more of an epiphytic succulent, I guess you might say. But I don't, I would not term that a succulent. Okay. Um, it likes drier conditions. Um, my guess is that I overwatered it. But it's been neglected. It has definitely been neglected. Okay. Um... So we've got that. The, the wax plant here is looking fantabulous. I have no problem. That's just loving it out here. Everybody else is looking okay. I've got one leaf not going to make it on the, uh, the crinum. But then again, these, these types of bulbs shed their leaves, you know, as needed. So um, the leaves are going to, you know, especially like this one, for instance, it got, yeah, it got cut off here when we went to repot. So, um, actually I can probably salvage that right now and get that out of the way. We might actually have something eating it too. I'm going to pick that off and get rid of it right now. Let's see, was that bug eaten? No, that just got torn on something. 
Okay, no big deal. No big deal. We'll just throw that out. Okay. Um, so let's get this back over here. This needs to dry out and stay dried out. I've just got it kind of... <laughs> See the roots on it? Yeah. They're just kind of... It's in sad shape right now, but... Um, all right, where were we? Let's see, what are we going to do today? Well, first of all, let's work on Rhodes, uh, let's work on his, uh, sunflowers here. And what I have done, and let's, uh, let me see if I can't, whoops, let's see, where do we want to go? I want to go up a little bit, okay. I hope I don't scare you when I get over there, okay. So what we're going to do, I've got a pot already set right here. Let's see if we're in good position for that. I still have to figure this camera out. Oh, no, we're nowhere near where we need to be. Where are we? Yeah, see? Uh, let's... We'll do it like that, okay? And we'll see if we can't. I've already got a bunch of soil in here, and I've got another bucket of kind of crappy soil right here that we're going to use. I'm not using the best soil for this project. I'm just not. Um, I'm going to need to add a little bit of water to that. Oh, here we go. all the soil. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Absolutely beautiful. All right. We can also take a little bit of this out because this is, I think, a little too, a little too much. Whoa. I'm not ready to fall over. Okay. I think we're going to plant these guys a little deeper and let some of that stem, you know, Okay. And I think we'll put like, oh, I don't know, maybe five of them in here if we can. Um, which ones look the best? Let's see. Let's pick out a couple of these right here. We'll get their dead leaves off of them so they don't have to expend the extra energy to push them off. Because that's what plants have to do. Oh, we have an ant on it. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Alright. And then what we're going to do is pull the rooted thing out. Right, like that. Yep. See? There we go. Check it out. Oh, we got a couple of extra leaves there we don't need. What do we have in the back here? Oh! That's why we have ants. You know why we have ants? Because we have aphids. Aphids, oh, excuse me, underwear. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully we can cut that out. Um, aphids, ants actually farm aphids. Believe it or not, it's the weirdest thing you've ever heard, I know, but they do. So what we're going to do is the minute we get the rest of them in here, we're going to diatomaceous earth the hell out of everything, okay? There's another one. Let's see about getting him out of here. Um, betting we have a problem on this one too because we got a lot of dead leaf going on. Okay, what's going on here? Mm, probably just a leaf hopper or a beetle or something. Who knows? Okay. Turn to the side there. Push them down in. Okay. We're also obviously going to have to put something in here that will help hold these suckers up because they're not going to stand on their own. 
So, a tomato cage. I may have to use a tomato cage. Okay. Let's try this one right here. Okay. There we go. I hope you guys are seeing this at all. I, I'm doing the best I can here. Oh, let's get the grass out of there. We don't need the grass in there anymore. Okay. Put him in there. There's three. We'll do two more. Oh, let's see. What do we got? Some of these are just terrible looking, you know. Just awful. I don't even know where to begin. Let's see. So, what else do we have? Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's see. I don't really know. Some of these don't look so great. How about these? Uh, try one of these. Let's see how this will work. It's a different type. But I don't suppose that's going to matter once we get it in here. Oh, look at that. There's a piece of grass sucking off of it. Um life there. It's life force. And ordinarily, folks, this is not how I would do it, okay? Ordinarily, these things would go in the ground, but this was not my project. This was not my circus and not my monkeys. <laughs> and somehow, it turned into my circus and my monkeys. And it's not really making me very happy to have to watch these things all die, but you know, like I said, not my circus, not my monkeys. So I'm going to do the best I can right now, and then we're going to let Road fill part around with whatever he wants to do with the rest of them, which is, I imagine, not much. Maybe he'll, you know, who knows, maybe he will put the rest of them in, um, You know, maybe he'll put the rest of them in, uh, in the compost heap, which is where I would put them. Okay. So all I'm going to do, this is really not helping. Yeah, there's some composted yuck in here from bulbs, too. Oh, they're in my hair, that's why. Great, that's just what I want. Aphids in my hair, right? Okay. find a tomato cage somewhere, but that's what that's kind of going to look like, all right, let's get it watered in, and then we'll find a tomato cage for it, okay, we'll find the tomato cage later, I think this right here is already fertilized water, um, Just to give it a little oomph, I'm going to revert to my Osmocote here and sprinkle a little bit of that in. What I really should do is put a systemic in there. But I have to find it. So, flies for that right now. That will work. Okay. So... 
all I'm doing, the, water, the soil is already damp. It's already plenty damp. All I'm doing is basically settling it around the roots, okay? That's all I'm basically doing. Okay. Need to refill that. And I need to get this outside, uh, which was the one with the ick on it. Ah. I think it was this one. Yes, it was. Oh, look at this. We only have these two leaves that have ick on them. And these two leaves that have ick on them. So we're just going to get rid of those leaves. And I think we might be good on that. Oh, so let's get this outside the door here. All right, Road. Here are some of your sunflowers. I need a tomato cage. They're not looking great. They're very spindly. Okay. Now what? Well, let's get us back up to where we need to be. Um, let's get us over here. And, uh, okay. plant we're going to work on, okay? Um, I don't know whether we're going to get real far today with it, um, mainly because of time constraint, because this is going to take a long time to sort through and sort out, but for right now, what I basically just wanted to show you was, this is the Litoborea, okay? And, God, I feel like I have something crawling on me. I hope not. Okay. Um, so this is the Litoborea. And as you can see, it's in quite a large clay pot. Okay? I've got it in this flat because it is... It has pushed itself all the way. It was on a it was on a shelving unit right in front of the windowsill. Okay, so it was like leaning toward, and I couldn't. I have stuff piled in front of it, so I couldn't get to it to keep turning the pot. So it ended up reaching all the way over, and this is where we're at. And. Uh, I can see we, we somehow we still have a, a little green tag here that is from probably the tag that says Letterboria on it. But we've got like a ton and a half of dead leaves that need to come off. Um, it's going to require like just so much maintenance that I can't even tell you. And... <laughs> I'm not going to film all of that because that would just be too much. So this is my uh, my little bucket that keep all my crap in. And this is going to go down to the compost pile eventually. So get that. What else we got here? Man, do I have the stuff out here. This is going to be a... <laughs> this is going to be fun when fall rolls around and it's time to bring everything in. Um, but these are actually, each one of these, each one of these is a, a, a little bulb of its own. It has like a little bulbous end on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of good flats when I can find them. Maybe the, 
a type like this. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, you know, get my pots ready to go, get some soil in them, and then I'm going to try to separate out all the live growth from all the dead growth. And once we do that, I will have plenty to share with my friends. And uh, I'll have some for myself. So, um, I can't really show you what one of the bulbs looks like now. They're, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, is this one? Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to wait until I get this thing kind of cleaned up. And once I get it cleaned up, we'll get to, you know, I'll get, I'll show you guys exactly what, uh, <laughs> how much came off of it that was dead and what I have left over. It's really a beautiful plant. Um, it's fairly easy to grow. I can see I'm going to have to come out here with insecticide. Don't like to, but like I say, I make an exception for use of chemicals on potted plants, mainly because Mother Nature is, you know, I, well, I could use diatomaceous earth, but then I would be forever breathing it upstairs, and I can't really do that. Let's see, we have something trying to lay eggs on this, and we're not putting up with that. All right. Um... <coughs> So each of these pots is a short, a short version, and I've got three different sizes, and I figure <clears throat> for some of the bigger bulbs, we'll use this size for some of the smaller ones, and I'll, I'll put them in groups, you know, they'll be like, they like to be grouped together, so I'll put like three to five in each pot, and then for, you know, the medium ones, we'll put them in these. This says Karina on it. I don't, I'm guessing that was the name of a bulb that I had at one time that obviously didn't make it. And uh, then I just washed out a bunch of these, uh, these neat little shorter, flatter ones here. I'm looking for, this is what I'm, what I'm looking for is the shortest, flattest type of these that I can get because these have, Zolotoboria has very shallow roots, so um, not really necessary to have a deep pot. As a matter of fact, it's just, it, it's extra excess space and excess soil that I won't need. And a plant likes to be comfortable in its surroundings. Um, I ran into someone on YouTube when I was looking through uh, the videos for how to... <laughs> How to salvage a fairly destroyed Letoboria. And I ran into um, a few videos, and one of them actually said uh, that um, this type of plant likes to be pot bound. It encourages it to bloom. Well, this is true, but they don't tell you why. And most people aren't really aware of the scientific reasoning, okay? And it's very simple, okay, logic. This is, this is just flat logic, okay? First of all, you're growing along in a pot, right? And your feet, your shoes start to get really tight, okay? And they're so tight now that, you know, your, your body sends out a signal that says, man, if we don't reproduce, you know, and we, we're stuck here, we can't move, we're stuck here, so if we don't reproduce or we don't try to reproduce, we're going to die. And we're not going to be able to fulfill our one, you know, our one objective, and that is to carry genetic material forth into the future. That's what a plant or animal, that's, that's the objective, right? Okay? So, yeah, that's what being pot-bound does. It forces the plant to either... Uh, you know, grow uh, Stalins or uh, flower, put up flowers whereby it can, you know, be pollinated and create seeds. And this is, but that's why, okay? That's why. <laughs> you can get them to bloom in another way, and that is through proper care, okay? 
If they have optimal care and everything they need and you treat them right and water them when they're supposed to be watered, you don't drown them, um, you feed them properly, they'll bloom for you. They will bloom for you. Nature has a, a you know, <laughs> nature has a time for everything to bloom. And um, in the case of these particularly, the hippiastrum or amaryllis as they're more commonly known, that time is springtime in this part of the world. These are actually from like South America. Um, that's where uh, M the hippiastrum originates is South America. Um, and there are a lot of beautiful ones down there. Very beautiful ones. The species are, types are just, just unbelievably gorgeous if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so, now that we have dispelled that uh, little bit of misinformation, um, what else should we do? I don't really know if we have time to... We just did road thing. I don't want to go rummaging around somewhere else for a uh, <laughs> another basket, you know, a, a, or a, a tomato cage. I don't have one in here. Um, what else can we do right now? Oh, you know what we could do? We could repot this. Let me see this. Do we have any ants in here? Nope, we look clear of ants. Okay. Looks like we've got some dead material here. Yep, don't need that. Why well, that's just going to be dead root when I pull it out. Okay, this actually goes upside down in there. Um... This actually will grow outside here. I don't have to pot it, but I kind of wanted to give it a fighting chance. So I'm thinking we'll just we'll stick it in a neat little pot and let it. Um, do I have a clean pot for it? Let's see. Oh, I do. I think I just happened to. And there was something else I wanted to do today too. And that was to start, let's see, I'm guessing it's probably not going to need this much, and I don't really know if I have this much soil. about this um well first of all I am going to have to do a lot of untangling here a lot of this as you can see is kind of tangled in with this plastic and I don't want to cut anything off here I don't want to choke it and I can do Hope I don't cut cut myself or cut a body part off that I need, right? Alright, we'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of this. think they're real sly, you know. Yeah, I know. You think you're real slick, but I found it. Got a bunch of eggs, too. Well, there's no male, so, you know, you don't really need them, right? They would just rot. I don't think you want that, do you? And they are delicious, I must tell you. So thank you for that. I know. I'm right here. You can go away, cat, okay? I am not feeding you right now. I'm just not, okay? I'm just not. 
Alright, yeah, there's a, there are a lot of roots to come out of this one. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we're going to have to cut away most of this. See that? That's just, might be able to rip it away. I mean, it's really, really old. I'm just wondering what's going to come crawling out of here, you know? That's what worries me. I don't, I don't do well when it comes to spideys and things like that. They freak me out. They're not my thing at all. this apart you know in a lot of cases if as long as it's not going to strangle the plant you like especially with orchids you can sometimes take an orchid in a pot and if it's like if its roots are like overflowing you can just leave it right in that pot and put it in a new pot with you know new uh, some new medium for it to crawl around in um, I've seen that done a lot with orchids but again those are epiphytes. They grow in the air. They don't really, you know, they, they grow like, you know, in, in where branches meet in the trees in the jungle. You know, they don't, uh, they don't really require any sort of major anchorage. And they need air. They need that air on their roots. So, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of junk here, man. So here we are just down on the farm. Just This is one of my first longer plant videos. Ooh, do you hear that? Those are the owls, the giant owls. Wow. It's daylight and they are making racket. Wonder what that means. It's really still out there right now. I'm guessing we got some rain rolling in. That would be my guess. All right. Um, you know, I'm going to put this on its side here. And see what's going on in this side of it. Yeah, see. A lot more plastic to come off. Sorry if my back is to you here. I'm trying to get this off of here without damaging the plant itself. Plus, I don't have my glasses with me, which doesn't help me very much, right? What's the matter, Lucy? Yeah, there's some kind of little worms buried in here. Probably not very good for, you know. Whatever else is going on here. More plastic. Looks like there's some white plastic going on in there. I don't know what the heck that was. Might have been the uh, tag that came with it. There's a Harley. Oh, there's a dead branch. Get rid of that at the same time. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, this, this is a succulent. Okay, kind of sort of. This is a succulent. It has fleshy leaves. Okay. 
I would not really call this a succulent. It, it may be a member of the succulent family, but honestly, I, in my estimation, I would not necessarily call this a succulent. I don't know why I'm working on it. I said we weren't going to. It's just going to take way too long. Oh, yeah, that's another project for another day because it's going to be a big one, and I'd like to get part of it. I'd like, I'd like to get through a lot of it so you guys don't have to, you know, sit with the boredom, although you're already sitting through boredom on this, so what's the diff, right? Well, this is kind of a... They're both really hard cases, man. This one I managed to salvage from behind some crap in front of the garage. And, uh, the other one, well, that's my bad, okay? I, I know a lot about, I, I should say my knowledge base, my knowledge base of container growing, um, grew by leaps and bounds within the last, say, 20 years, Okay. Before that, I thought I knew a lot, but I really didn't, okay? And then I met a group of people that, on a message board, uh, it used to be called Garden Web. You may have heard of it. Um, it's been bought out by another company, and it's honestly not what it once was. I don't belong to it anymore, but... I do still go there and uh, I follow one person, one or two people there um, that actually have really, really great information, like scientific, tested, uh, professional information. Not the normal kind, not what you would find at, you know, anyone else talking about. We're talking about this, you know, the type of, of medium that I use. The aerated, the larger particle, the aerated uh, um, medium that I use that actually fulfills the plant's every need, you know, without drowning it, which is what most of your, uh, your more silty soils are actually doing. So, um, yeah. You know, this is bizarre. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get the plastic, the rest of the plastic out of this. Check this out, man. <laughs> I really want to. I mean, really badly. I want to get this out of here so that it's it's not choked by the drainage holes of this old thing. But I got a feeling I'm not going to be able to get it all out without really hurting it. So I'm going to do my very best here. To cut in, there we go. Okay, let's cut in. Let's see if we can't get a little more off. And okay. Well, I do want to save that. Let's get rid of the plastic here. Okay. All right. Now, what kind of a pot should we put that in? I, I really, I kind of like to save this because this is another short one, kind of like this one. And I think I'm probably going to need it. <clears throat> I have an orchid pot here. But what I really need is just a temporary pot. That's all I really need. Just a temporary pot. Hey, let's use this one. What do you think? Alright. Let's do that. So, since it's just going to be temporary, we're going to use some of our icky soil here. Again, and this is just, this is not what I normally use, okay? The only reason I'm using this, and you can, let's see if you can, if you can see what, what it looks like. It's, like I say, this is not what I would normally use. This is a lot more silty than I would normally use, but... Since it's only temporary until I can find a garden spot for it, that's what we're going to do, okay? Alright. 
So, man. I don't really want this thing to get too wet because it's supposed to be like drying out so I'm going to move this back over here where it was okay and ow, right now we are going to finish filling this let's see yeah I guess we're doing okay a greenhouse so if shit falls on the floor no biggie okay I'm just gonna tap that in I am not going to I never tamp down anything you stand a chance of crushing roots by doing that so I never do that when I water it in what will happen is the water will do that job for me okay Sorry, I keep disappearing from sight. One of these days, I will figure this camera out, and I will figure out how to get it all, you know, in one spot where I don't have to worry about uh, okay, there we go. Where I don't have to worry about, you know, people not being able to see what's going on. Um, right now, what I'm going to do, I'm trying to do here is we're well, gearing up. I I have this feeling we've got some bad weather coming in, and uh, so what I want to do is get this all finished up by the time the bad weather hits. And there we go. Get a little bit of asthma coat there. Luckily, we have another watering can ready to go here. Okay, there we go. That will help settle in the, the potting soil. There we go. Actually, it could use a little more potting soil. There it goes. It's dripping already, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Freely drip. Okay. Okay, I see, uh, I see some little worms and stuff in here that I'm not real happy with. What we're going to do with this one is, uh, actually I'm going to move some of these pots out of my way for right now. Get those inside the orchid pot for now. And get these out of my way. These can go back over here where they were. been watered that likes a lot of sun I guess right here will be good for now over here I'll just leave that right there okay coffee oh good god that tastes good okay so Another thing I wanted to do today that I don't know if I'm going to get to is taking care of this. And this is the chalice wine. 
as you can see by the cobwebs on the outside of the pot, this one has been neglected for a while. The It grew out of a little cutting. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'll bring it in. Maybe you'll be able to see up close. Look, look at the level of that soil. Okay, that's pitiful. That's pathetic. Okay, and like I say, I don't normally pot them in plastic. Um, but while I was up north babysitting, the grandkids when they were younger rode, uh, took some cuttings. He saw that uh, my main, the main vine was getting really, really huge and unwieldy. And it was starting to grow like some of it was dying. So he took some cuttings and he managed to actually salvage a bunch of it for me. So kudos to him. And he is not a plant guy by any, you know, stretch of the imagination. But he did a great, great job saving this. So, And as you can see, the other day, we've had it like this. Because what we're trying to do is get the, the, the leaves to turn and reach a little bit, reach for the light, and that's east. So, what I'm going to do is move this one out of the way and put that back there like that. Okay. Um, this is that heuchera, the coral bells. And I got one leaf on here that's not doing well, and I don't know why. Seem to have anything there. Okay. Oh, I think I see why. Yeah, I see you hiding, you little leaf hopper. You, you're eating my leaves. Yeah, I'll just get you out of here. All right. Okay, it's time for a chemical approach. And I hardly ever say that because I hate using chemicals, but. I think this one needs it. So, we'll put that back there. And uh, Okay, um, I don't really know what we accomplished today. We've got, uh, we got our, our succulent done here. This is sedum. I don't really know what variety. Obviously, it gets little yellow flowers. This is something you can grow in a rock garden, okay? Anybody can grow this stuff. Um... Most grandmas have it in their yard somewhere. Um, it's actually a wonderful little little plant. It likes, it can tolerate the harsh, dry, uh, you know, the south end of your house. You know, even if you have sandy or gravelly soil, it doesn't matter. It can handle it. Um, pop some of this in and you'll have like a beautiful ground cover. Um, there are many varieties, different colors of flowers. I've seen it in white, pink, yellow. Um, I think there may even be a red. I'm not sure. But uh, when this is all lit up yellow, it looks really cool. They don't flower for very long, as I recall. But even so, it's still a pretty neat little plant. Okay, so... We're going to just let it over here for a while and let it get used to its new pot, its new surroundings. And uh, what else did we want to do today? Let's see. Oh, the coir. The coconut coir. Um, I, what I need to figure out is, I need to figure out if I have, because right now I have more, um, uh, I have more pine chips um, absorbing water so for our next uh, mixture. I've made a new batch, but I always like to have a little extra on hand. So right now, I've got some of that going on. Let me see how much Akadama we have left in here. If it's not a lot, I'm thinking about, well, let's see. Hmm. 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 I don't know how much I really want to be a part of. Let's see what we got here. All right. Let's see. Oh, here we go. 
as you can tell, this is my bucket of, uh, well, let's open it up and see how it's absorbing. Good thing I still hold ice cream tubs, huh? Okay. Yeah, okay, we need to mix it a little bit. Oh, does that smell nice. This is, these are pine chips. That's exactly what these are. This is pine, pine bark. Fur bark, I guess you might say. This is actually, it's, <laughs> it's called reptibark. It's for reptiles. It's reptile bedding. That's what I, what I, that's what it's bagged as. But for me, this is the main part of my soil mixture, okay? And that's what it looks like. Like I said, um, a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch in size is what I'm usually looking for. But honestly, I, I, I don't even bother. I don't even... Damn it, I got a fly sitting on me. I don't even bother to... Uh, uh, it's not dusty. The stuff, the reptibark is already like dust free, so I don't have to worry about it. And the pieces are not that different in size where I really have to screen it. But I can if I need to, okay? What I'm going to do right now, though, is just give it a little mix because I got a lot of water at the bottom. And uh, we need to kind of turn this turn this over. Kind of like, a, you know, letting your cereal absorb the milk, right? Okay, so I'm going to do that. Ah, the fly went down my dress. Thank you very much. Mr. Fly, not happy, not happy, okay, um, that was shrubby, so that goes with that, this is, okay, here we go, gotta make sure I got the right one, the right one, okay, okay, this is my pine bark, and that is going to sit down there and continue to absorb, what we're going to do is take out our main container of soil. I keep my big spoon in here. And this is what my soil looks like once it's mixed. And i put a little bit on a thing for you so you can see what it looks like, okay? This is what I pot everything in right here, okay? See if I can get it right in the camera here. There we go. Okay. There are there's Akadama, pine bark vines, granite chips, um, coarse perlite, and a couple of handfuls of high quality potting just potting soil. Um, I believe the potting soil that I'm working with, the brand name on it was Sunshine. We used to get it in bales. And I'm like on my last one. Um, but that's what it looks like. And the only reason that I put that little extra, the little extra dirt in there, a little extra, you know, the little particles, is for moisture retention. Okay? Because my upstairs where I live is... Uh, extremely dry the air conditions are just really really dry so that's why i do that i do it that way okay let's get that back out get back up to here okay so anyway that's that and what i'm going to do right now put the rest of the akadama in here okay Because I'm going to use this, and I'll, let's see, I might as well mix that in now. Just a little extra Akadama, it's not going to hurt anything. And Akadama is nothing more than, if you take a peek at them, if you take a peek at them, all they are 
are just little little balls of clay. Just same thing that the clay pots are made out of. They're just little little kind of some of them are round, some aren't. They're like little BBs. Some are bigger than a BB. They're approximately all about that size. And all it is is just unglazed clay, okay? It's very absorbent. So I always let it soak up water overnight before I start using it. But I'm kind of going to just mix this in a little bit. I should get deeper than that, and I will at some point here. But for right now, that wasn't the point. The point was to empty that so I can show you guys what happens with this core stuff and why I don't use it. Okay. So, what we have here is just a regular old empty bucket, okay? And this is, like I said, this this came with a bulb that I bought. Um, probably at Walmart or somewhere, you know, they're, I wait till the end of the, you know, till they're, <laughs> I wait until they're pretty cheap. <laughs> um, I once paid like three bucks for a Minerva bulb and it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, they've gone up in price, of course, just like everything else. So, um, a lot of them now are, you know, 12, 15, 20 bucks. It all depends. You can get them cheaper if you order them through catalogs, but you don't always get to see the size if you can if your local garden center and I mean like if you have a, a place like out here in Champaign um, we have a place called uh, Prairie Gardens and they sell everything and I do mean everything right down to you know koi for your fish pond and uh, vegetable starts annuals perennials trees shrubs even even soil for bonsai and the pots to go with it. They have everything. If it's related to growing and gardening or landscaping, they've got it, okay? And every fall, they get a selection of bulbs in. And I'm going to tell you something. They do a fantastic job of, you know, choosing uh, their distributor and choosing the types of bulbs. Um, their bulbs are usually... Anywhere from baseball to actual like softball size and the roots are usually decent and healthy. The basal plate is nice. Um, they've already been pre, uh, pre-chilled, pre you know, and so they're, the minute you pot them and, and water them in, they start, you know, you'll, you'll see buds come up right away and they'll flower. But when you buy the kits at your cheaper stores, this is usually what comes with them now, okay? Either this or a little bag of black dirt. Either one, I, I usually discard. I'll throw it out in the garden or whatever. But what I'm going to do, and I just want to show you guys what happens when we use this kind of stuff, okay? It comes in a little compressed disc, okay? It looks kind of like press board, you know? See? You can see that it's just like, you know, just looks like, I don't know. It's just been compressed and dried out. Okay, and I'm going to put that down in there. Damn it, I have a fly driving me apeshit insane. Alright, there we go. That goes in the trash. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to rain. The flies are biting. I'm telling you, man. Um, here, how to rehydrate this Quar Media disc? Remove plastic wrap, place disc in a minimum two quart container, add one to two cups of warm water, allow the disc to expand, it takes 10 to 15 minutes it says. If the media disc is not fully expanded, add additional water. Once expanded, stir the media and drain excess water if necessary. Transfer expanded media into the pot and follow planting instructions. fairly simple. I think we can figure that one out for ourselves. But, what I'm going to do here is, and this is just plain old water in a jug. Got a couple of them here. And, let's see. Oh, I don't know. That's 
already getting puffy. It's already getting bigger. It's like one of those little fireworks smoke, you know, the little smoke, the snake things. <laughs> you light it, it gets big. Check it out. Look at that. Look, it's already like taller than it was. It's already doubled in size. All right, obviously it needs a little more water. So we're going to put that in there. It's coming apart pretty fairly good, but we need more water. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. It needs more water. You know, like I said, this is not my favorite stuff to work with. I don't like it at all. Not by itself as a medium, okay? I would never use this by itself as a medium. This will choke the life out of your roots. And just by simple fact of it being, you know, that water retentive. I mean, you can see how it's sucking up the water. So if it's sucking up the water that fast, that means it ain't letting go of it very well, right? And that's not what plants need. Plants need to be watered thoroughly so they can take what they need but then they need to get rid of the rest, okay? They need oxygen at the same time. So, um, you know. Now, this is something that I might use as, you know, like a handful or two. Um, I might use as uh, an addition to a medium like I use. Um, I might use it to... Uh, I might throw a handful or two in and mix it in with a, a giant container of, of that kind of medium. And uh, that would give me a, the, a, the bit of moisture retention I'm looking for without going overboard. But to just use this to plant something in? It, no, I, I, I can't. I can't. The roots would certainly die. They would drown. They would drown. And I'm going to guess that now that we've got this wet, what's going to happen to it is if we don't use it, it's going to mold. And that's just my guess, but I think I'm probably on it pretty good. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll put the cover on here real tight when we're done hydrating it. I think that should be enough. Oh, yeah. If we need to, we can always squeeze out. There's still a little bit left here that's dry from the center of it. There we go. All right. I think that should be enough water. And we'll just let that kind of, you know, suck up the rest of it. Yeah, there's what's left. There's the, there's the very center of it right there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what we're going to do... I'll leave that. Okay. We'll cover it up real good. There we go. All right. Now we have something else we can use in a, in a medium emergency here. Right? All right. Let me wash my hands off here. That's the nice thing about working in the greenhouse. You know, you can wash your hands off and it doesn't really matter because the floor can be wet. As a matter of fact, underneath this greenhouse, um, there lives uh, a good size uh, bull snake. At least at last I, last I knew she lived under here. And... Uh, Every once in a while, she throws a bunch of babies out, and you'll see them sunning themselves on the sidewalk. They look like little brown pencils. They're kind of cool. They hiss like, uh, when they get a little bit of size to them, they hiss like, uh, like they sound like rattlesnakes, kind of, but they're not. They're, they're, not, har they're not, not harmful. I do believe an adult might try to bite, but 
Um, the only thing that would do would be to kind of, you know, um, leave you hurting, you know, and I would definitely want to take an antibiotic after that, but, yeah, so, um, I do believe that we're going to end this stream here. Or not stream, but, you know. Um, so I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I hope you learned a little something today. I tend to be a bit scatterbrained. You know, squirrel! <laughs> my, uh, my GPS unit is not here with me. I miss her very much. And I, I do wish that she would come back and uh, hang for a little bit. But, uh, um... And another squirrel. Um, but anyway, I have enjoyed talking as I've been working. And um, I got a couple things potted. We got roads, what do you call it, potted. The only thing I have left to do here is throw away my garbage. Make sure that all of my plants out here... Oh, I got to look for a tomato cage. And I just got to make sure that all my plants out here are watered. Everybody outside. Just in case the rain bypasses us and we don't get hit with it. Because if we don't, what's going to happen is everything's going to dry out. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. So thanks for joining me. Um, I'm going to take care of uh, my garbage and a couple other things here. And then I'm going to go get myself some more coffee. Find out what time it is. Get ready to do chores. Get my animals fed. And... Um, that should do it. So, I hope you've learned a little bit. Um, you know, it's like with anything. You know, there are many schools of thought on the subject. You would be surprised at how much controversy there really is when it comes to uh, container growers and what they uh, believe about medium. But I think that Honestly, it's not about what you believe. It's not about having a green thumb. There is no such thing. A green thumb is nothing more than applied knowledge. That's all it is, okay? And knowledge comes from, you know, scientific fact, you know, physics, basic physics. This, these are things that we learned in middle school and high school, you know? that water can react only one way because of gravity, you know, and, um, you know, the way plants' roots grow. Without healthy roots underneath, the plant above can't possibly stay healthy, right? I mean, that makes sense, right? So, you know, these are just things that I want to share with you, you know. It's a you know, the, the gardening industry is, it's just like any other industry. It exists to profit. Um, so, a lot of the things that, you know, they will tell you, it's simply, uh, they want you to come back and buy more. The things that they want to sell you. Like, you know, like I said before, I was looking for a, a video to help me with my Letaboria. And some of the things that were coming out of people's mouths, I was thinking, but that doesn't make sense, you know? Why would you buy an automatic watering, you know, a, a, a planter when there is no set schedule? You water a plant when it needs it, not on a schedule. And you can't possibly, you know, you can't possibly tell at any given time, how much it's going to need and when it's going to need more. You have to physically check it out. You have to physically stick your finger down in the soil, you know, toward the middle. You're not going to really hurt anything. Yep, I can still feel a little bit of moisture, meaning my crinum right here does not need to be watered yet. And when I'm in doubt, I give it a day or two. It's not going to kill it, you know? So... You know, these are, you know, water once a week. What is that? 
what if in a week it doesn't need water? What if it needs water sooner than a week? You see what I'm saying? So, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the things that we're we're told just aren't right. They're they're not they're not correct. You're not going by what, you know, we've by what science and physics tells us about roots and uh you know, plant growth and, you know, all of this. Um anyway, let me end this. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking your ear off. So, but I do hope that um, as we move forward and I make more of these little uh, videos um, and we talk more about growing uh, plants in containers, um, I, I really hope you guys learn, you know. I hope you guys get better at it if you're interested. And uh, if you're not, thanks for, for, you know, thanks for hanging in there and, and you know, listening. Um, I appreciate it. I, I, I appreciate everyone who comes to my my videos. I, I'm not very good at this yet. I, I really kind of suck at it, actually. But I'm learning, and uh, I'll get there. And uh, we'll talk more about, you know, other things as they come up. Um, what I should do is make a list of, you know, each time that I make a video, uh, you know, we'll have like a, a, a specific subject that maybe I can cover or a specific type of plant maybe that I can cover and maybe that will help a little more um like I say I tend to be kind of you know, a little bit here a little bit there a little bit all over the place and it works for me but it might not work for everyone so I'd like to organize myself a little better on this but so again thanks for joining me peace everyone um and um as I used to end all of my gardening messages with on message board message boards happy gardening okay see you guys later